Hello, today we're going to be making animations for our derma panels, such as the one you see here whenever we open up the panel, our rainbow button, our sliding text on our button here, our hover effect whenever we hover on or off of the button, and a toggle for whenever we click on the button. So let's get started. Hello, so before we get started, I just want to make sure that your files are set up correctly. Um, today we're going to be working with two files. We have our sh tutorial and our client side tutorial. So in this client side file, we just have a font here, which is font size 24 with Roboto, weight 1000. And then we have two colors here for the frame and button. In our shared file here, we have a table called hot animations. This is what we're going to be storing our functions on. Um, and that's what we're going to be calling our add on hot animations. So begin, what we're going to want to do is create a function to actually open up the menu. And to do that, we're going to say function um, hot animations dot open menu. And we're going to call this by a console command. So I'm going to do con command dot add and then the name of the, the command, which is going to be hot anim. And then the second argument is going to be the function that is called whenever this command is entered. So I'm going to do hot animations dot open menu. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to create some form of frame here. So I'm going to say hot animations dot menu equals VGI dot create E frame. And we'll say hot animations dot menu um, set title empty title hot animations dot menu make pop up true. And for now, let's go ahead and actually get some size going. So we'll say we'll store our screen width and screen height. And I'm going to set the size for this something relative to the screen height or screen size. Sorry. So we'll do 0.5 as your height times, uh, maybe like 0.5. And then we shall save that. And so if I type hot anim now, you know, so we've got this panel here and I'm actually going to be opening up this panel quite often. So I'm going to type bind O hot anim. So now whenever I press O, it'll actually open up this panel. So that just makes it a bit easier for me in terms of debugging. Uh, one thing I want to do is actually check to see if this panel already exists whenever we call this function. So I'm going to check if is valid that menu. Then what we're going to want to do is remove it. That way, if we accidentally press O too many times, this menu won't stack on top of itself and we won't have any terms of like collision issues. So now I can spam O over and over and over again. And there's only one menu being created. OK, so now that we got that set up, everything is good. However, the first thing I want to do is actually set up some form of animation size. So I'm going to hop on the wiki and see what we can use for that. So with this uh, method here called new animation, we can create custom animations. However, with this method, uh, we don't need to do that because there are some pre existing functions that are actually built on top of this. So if you look here, we have move to size to slide up, yada, yada, yada. I'm actually going to be using size two. And so you can see we have the arguments here, which is the width, the height. Uh, the time to perform the animation within if there should be any form of delay, uh, the easing, and then a callback, which will execute some code whenever the animation is complete. So what I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to head into my code now. And I'm going to want to set the size of this uh, to nothing. I actually don't even want to bother with the size. So we're actually, you know, we'll, we'll set it to zero. See if that helps. So we'll set the size to zero. We're not going to worry about the positioning here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that method size two. So we're going to say hot animations menu size two. And then we're going to need uh, some variables here, which is going to be local frame W. We're going to need the width of the frame, the height, uh, the anim time. So how long the animation is going to uh, be. And then, then the delay and then the ease. So I'm going to go ahead and just assign these to some values here. So uh, we'll do 0 0.5 for the width, 0 0.5 for the height. And then for the animation time, we'll say about 1.8 seconds. I don't want any form of delay. And I want it to be 1.8 seconds because I want this to be kind of quick. And then for the easing, I'm going to do 0 0.1. So it's very fast, but towards the end, it kind of slows down a bit. So um, that will be pretty good there. So now what I'm going to do is take these values here and pass this into our size two function. So I'm just going to do frame W, frame height, anim time, anim delay, anim ease. And then we're going to have our callback for whenever this is complete. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this now. Hop in game, open that up. And now you can see we have it actually easy now. And that looks pretty good. OK, so uh, what I want to do now is actually um, have it center because right now you can see it's just up here. And if I go ahead and call something like this, if I say hot animations center, 
and then I run that code, you can see that it doesn't actually center with the size. So what we need to do is actually, while this is animating, we need to recenter it constantly. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is store a value here in a variable called is animating. And I'm gonna set this to true because whenever um, this panel is being opened, it is going to be animating. However, when the animation is complete, thanks to this callback, we can go ahead and say is animating is equal to false. And so I'm gonna do that. And so now we have this variable here, whenever the animation starts, it will be true. And then whenever the animation is done, it'll be false. So what we can do now is say hot animations dot menu dot think equals function me, which is the current panel that we're working with here, which will be the menu. And then we're gonna say if is animating, then we're gonna say me center. So now this will only be called while it is animating. So now if I head back in game, press O, you got this beautiful panel here. Okay, so now that we have this nice uh, animation going here, we can see that it's centering and it's sizing correctly. The next thing I wanna do is actually just kind of change the style of it, how it looks, um, so we can prepare it for whenever we add in our next buttons. So I'm just gonna override the paint function here. And I'm gonna take that background color that we have above and I'm gonna sign that here. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle that takes up this whole size of the menu. So now we open that, we get this nice, beautiful color here. Everything seems to be working. Okay, next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually add in a button here. So the button that I'm gonna be using is just gonna be the regular uh, default derma button. However, we are gonna decorate it so it has support for rainbow colors. So uh, a quick example of that, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna say uh, local button rainbow equals, um, and then we'll take the hot animations dot menu, and we're gonna add a D button. This is the, basically the same thing as vgui.create, um, but it's just a nicer way of writing it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call button rainbow dock top. So what this will do is position the button at the top of the panel um, or right below any panel that could potentially be above it. And you'll see that because we'll constantly call dock top and each button will get a, a position beneath one another. Um, next thing I want to do is set the text to nothing because we're going to be actually overriding or drawing the text inside the paint function. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say button rainbow dot paint equals function me with height and let's go ahead and get a simple color here surface dot set draw color button color surface dot draw rect so that's going to fill up that rectangle there and then we're going to do draw dot simple text rainbow button tutorial 24. So we're going to center on the X axis and then we're going to center on the Y axis. And then we'll do color underscore white for the text. And then the alignment on the X will be center. And then uh, same with the Y. So now if we save this, go in game, open it up. Now we got this rainbow button here. One thing I don't like is the size. So what we want to do is actually, um, instead of doing this on think, now that I realize we can actually do this on size change. That might be a better option. And then we can also return the width and the height of uh, the panel whenever on size change is called. And then we can do button rainbow set tall. And then we can take that height of the menu and set it to 0.1. And that way, uh, whenever the size is updating for our panel there, the size of the button will actually update as well. And so it'll always be 10% of the height of the panel, no matter what the size is. So now we got that, that looks good. One thing we need to do is actually make this rainbow. So to do that, I'm gonna be using a method called hsv2color. Okay, so for hsv2color, basically we have the hue, the saturation, and the value, and we can pass these in to create a color. Um, if you look at the example here, we have an example for drawing rainbow text, um, and it's just using set text colors, using hsv2color, and it's taking cur time times the speed, modulus 360, and so the only value that they're really updating here is the hue. And so I'm just going to actually take this here and copy it, and we're going to paste that into our code. Uh, but I want to actually create a couple things here. So at the top here, I'm going to create a local speed, and I'm just going to set that to 20. So this is how fast uh, the color is going to be transitioning. And then on top of that, I'm going to create an empty variable here called rainbow color. And the reason for this is because we want this to be outside of our button rainbow so we can access it in other buttons. So to do that now, what I'm going to say is rainbow color equals hsv to color uh, what we just got from the wiki here and we have that speed variable already all set up and so now we can actually replace the button color with our rainbow color so I'm going to save that now 
hop in game, close this, reopen, and voila, we have our rainbow color. You can see it's now transitioning uh, very nicely. If we go ahead and increase the speed, for example, to like 100, it's going to go five times faster, and you can see it's pretty fast. So I like the slow color, so I'm just going to stick with 20. Okay, next thing up on the list is our sliding text. So what I'm going to be doing from now on is kind of just copying and pasting a lot of our code here so we don't have to uh, waste our time. So I'm just going to copy the button rainbow here, and I'm just going to change a few things here. I'm going to call this button slide. And then down here where we set the size for the rainbow, I'm going to do the same exact thing for our button here. I'm going to say button slide set tall height times 0.1. And then uh, we're going to actually have the same speed variable. This doesn't need to be a different name um, because in this case, we're not going to be updating the speed. We want this one to be independent. Um, so we don't really need to worry about the names there. I'm just going to set this to five. And then the next thing we're going to need is actually a range. And range is going to be how far left and how far right our text is going to be sliding. So I'm just going to say range equals 100. Then over here, what we're going to do is actually create a offset. So inside our paint function here, we're going to say local offset equals that range. So 100 times. And then we're going to use math.sign. I've actually covered this in a previous tutorial in the GTA tutorial. So um, basically what we're doing with math.sign is we're just kind of going up and down between our range of numbers based on uh, time. So I'm going to do math.sign and I'm going to input cur time and then I'm going to multiply cur time by the speed, which will determine how fast this offset is going from uh, 100 to negative 100, or for this was 50, from 50 to negative 50. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add that to our X position and then save that. And I'm actually going to call this sliding text button. And then we're going to open that up. And now you can see we have the sliding text button. Also, I don't like the fact that that is rainbow. So I'm going to just change this real quick to our button color. I think that's what we called it. Yep. Open that back up. And voila, now you see we have our sliding text button. If I wanted to change this to, for example, 200, you can now see that it the range is much more higher. We can change the speed, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'm just gonna keep that to 100 because I like it like that. Also do note, if you do increase the range, uh, you might have to reduce the speed because it will basically reach the top of the range and the bottom of the range um, within the same amount of time. So now that we have that, the next thing we want to do is actually add in some form of hover effects whenever we hover on the button. A simple thing that people like to do is add in a highlight. Uh, however, I want to have a color bar that kind of fills up from left to right. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that we had here. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And just so you guys know, I, uh, whenever you see me highlight things like this, that's control D in sublime text. So that's how you can select multiple things like that. Um, and I'm going to call this button hover. And then uh, we're going to have a speed here. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to two. And then we're going to have a status. Basically, it's going to be a number between uh, zero and one. And this will allow us to multiply our width of our bar that we're going to be drawing by either zero or one to determine uh, what percentage it is in terms of completion. So I'm just going to set that to zero for default. And then what I want to do here is uh, we're going to check to see if the button is hovered. So to do that, we're going to say if me is hovered then we're going to do something. So if it's hovered, we're going to do something here. Otherwise, if it's not hovered, we're going to do something. So if it is hovered, what we want to do is increase our bar status. And so we're going to say bar, bar status equals math.clamp. And then we're going to take the current bar status and we're going to increase it by the speed. And we're going to multiply that by frame time so it's consistent across all frame rates. And we just want to clamp it between zero and one. So the minimum value here will be zero and the maximum value will be one. So it'll always be, be between these two numbers. Then we're just going to copy this here for if it's not hovered and we're going to do the opposite and we're going to reduce it by the speed. Then now that we have this bar status here, what I want to do is actually um, create another rectangle here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that rainbow color that we have from before and I'm going to use this for our little uh, hover effect. So this is basically just going to be drawing a rectangle that is on top of our entire button. However, what I want to do is make it so that this um, is size relative to the bar status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the width here. I'm going to say uh, width times bar status. So whenever this first starts, bar status is going to be zero. So the width will be basically zero. Uh, whenever we hover, let's say for 10% of time, the width will be 10%. So just to show what's going on here, I'm going to save this up in game. Now actually getting an error. Attempt to perform arithmetic on offset. Oh, we still have this variable here that we're no longer using. Let's try that again. Now you can see we have this sliding effect. However, uh, one thing I noticed is we need to change the size of our button here. 
So if we hop in game, now you can see the size is correct. And that's one way. However, I'm not too big of a fan on it taking up the whole thing. So what I want to do is actually offset the Y position here by 90% of the height. And then I want to take our height value for the rectangle itself and make that 10% of the height. So basically it will be moved 90% down and only 10% of the bar will be drawn. So now you can see we have that nice little hover effect. Also, we can call this hover effect button. And there we go. Okay, so next on the list, what I want to do is add in some form of toggle. So basically all it does is change its colors whenever the toggle is set. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time. Copy this. And instead of saying button hover, let's call this button toggle. And as we remember from before, we have to change the size here. So I'm going to set that to 10% of the height as usual. And then the next thing we want to do is add in some form of variable here, which will determine whether or not the button is toggled. So I'm going to say button.toggle is active. And by default, I'm going to set that to false. And then we're going to do some fancy stuff here with the colors. So uh, I'm going to get rid of all our hover stuff here, get rid of the rainbow color, and it should just look like a normal button now. Okay, so now that we have that going, if we hop in game now, you can see, whoopsie. Okay, so if we go in game now, you can see that nothing is really happening here. It's just a regular button. Also, I need to change the text here. I'm going to call this button toggle. Okay, so now that we have this button toggle here, uh, we have this variable called is active. So what I want to do is whenever the button is clicked, we're going to do button toggle dot do click equals function. And me is basically the button that is being clicked. And we're going to say me dot is active equals not me dot is active. And the reason why we're doing this is because, for example, if is active is set to false, not will do the inverse of it and set it to true. Or if it's true, it'll set it to false. And so now we can basically have this alternate uh, between true or false without having to do an if statement like if is active equals true, then set it to false, otherwise set it to true, yada, yada, yada. This is just a quick way to do that in one line. Uh, next thing we want to do is actually add in some form of condition into the argument that we pass here. So what we want to do is if it's not toggled, we just want to make the color white. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say not button toggle dot is active and color underscore white. So basically it's going to say, if this is not active, then we're going to return this second value here. Otherwise, if it is active, then we're going to return our rainbow color, uh, which is created from our rainbow button. So now if I go ahead and save this up in game, I'm going to click on it. Boom. You can see now it's rainbowed. And if I click on it now, it is white because it is not toggled. So there you have it. There's our animations. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. Make sure to subscribe, give a thumbs up, comment something nice. It'll make my day. Hope you guys have a good one. Take care.